Hello, West Seattle staff. This is a video at trying to set up some structure that'll work until Teams gets going the way it should. So it's basically the attempt to create a semi-permanent, individually assigned breakout room in Teams. All right. And unfortunately, I can't do this live because if I did live, uh, it would show student names eventually. So I'm going to have to do this as kind of a PowerPoint. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do here to create these semi-permanent Teams meetings, uh, which should actually work, unlike when you try and send kids to a breakout room, which sometimes misfires and seems to have all kinds of glitches, this did work for me very reliably. Uh, and it's also the model we used in the staff meeting, so, um, but with a lot more permissions locked down. So this is a way you can kind of work around the breakout room problem until you get it fixed. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your class. Um, and I made a folder that I was going to put my Teams meetings in, um, and so that you're actually already in a folder uh, within a Schoology course. And then you're going to want to add a page um, so that your students will be able to get the link to the Teams meeting. After that, uh, you'll get your open, you know, the page like you normally do when you're making a page for one of your Schoology classes. You can give it a title, um, you know, whatever the name of the group is. Here is where you're going to put the Teams link eventually. I made the pages first without the Teams links, um, and then I made the Teams links later, and I'll, that just could be done the opposite direction, but I think it works better to make the pages first and then go back and edit them all. When you make the pages, and here's the crucial part for a little more security, is you're going to want to have uh, individually assigned the groups. So that way you can create a group that only um, six or five or however many people you want can see. And that way only those five or six kids will be able to see the actual link. Um, they could still share it with each other, uh, but that's always kind of a problem. But at least actually finding the links will be limited to the number of students you want to directly find the link. It won't just be like we did in the staff meeting, all five or six meetings, and the kids could just click between them at random, and you'd have a very hard time tracking them down. This way, because you've individually assigned this particular meeting, that way you'd know exactly you know which students were in it. And if it does get out and become a problem, you'd know that one of the students you individually assigned this meeting to must have been the problem. So it'll at least limit your list of possible subjects if there's a problem later. The second thing you can worry about when you create the page is I always create it unpublished. And so right now, when you create a page, it creates by default published. If you click on this thing again, it goes to unpublished. So um, and that's kind of handy while you're making it so the kids don't start messing around with it before you're ready for them to mess around with it. So I created it, um, assigned it to individual students, and unpublished it. Uh, the next screen there would look like this. Once you've clicked that little uh, individual assigned button here, the little like bowling pin thing, um, then it brings up the assigned to thing here. This is why I couldn't do this live. But you type in the names of the students, last name first, and it'll autocomplete very quickly. So it's really quick to set up your groups. Um, I do it with a with a document over on the side here on my screen um, that has like the names of the groups already, and then I can just very quickly type in the groups. Um, you can also put in some instructions for what they're supposed to do, change the title. But basically, once you have it all set up, minus the link, because you still haven't created the Teams meeting yet, um, then you click Create, and that makes the um, actual group you want. So in the end, like when I did my example version with my advisory, I ended up just making three groups, eight kids a group, um, and this was uh, only visible to those eight kids, those eight kids, those eight kids. So when they actually go into the Teams meeting, uh, or the their Schoology page, um, and they look for their Teams meeting, they will only see the group that they're in. So if they're in Group A, they'll see Group A, but they won't see the other two. Same thing for B, they'll only see Group B. And so that's handy for you to be able to isolate out, you know, which group gets which link without them being able to bounce between the various meetings because you've posted all the links. Once you've got the group set up, uh, there's still no meeting links in there, remember. Now you need to go create the meetings. Um, and this is a little tedious, so this I would not do unless I was going to keep these groups around for a while, because this whole process probably took me six or seven minutes to do. Um, and uh, so you definitely would want this for like groups that are going to be semi-permanent. I'm thinking I might keep mine for like four weeks or something like that, um, and probably you know differentiate the groups and whatever it is I want to do. You could obviously change it around a little bit if you have to, but you don't want to have to do this too often. So then you're going to want to create a Teams meeting um, so that you can get the links that you need. So you know you go down to your Teams meeting thing in Schoology, click that, create meeting link, 
that brings up your standard teams meeting thing give it a title you should probably i think i actually titled mine like group a test but you know in the case of the example i gave it would be like you know redfish group fish or whatever um i never you can set the times they seem to be irrelevant but you know you could set them if you wanted maybe for a whole month or something i don't even know if it matters but give it a title click create um and that brings up this screen and at this point, and this is where the security comes in, you have to click this meeting options things I've highlighted here. So this allows you to set the meeting options before the kids can join the meeting. And so you want to set this properly. And it does turn out that the, that the meeting options you set do stick. And so that's important for you being able to keep these meetings isolated uh, and closed if you want. So when you click meeting options, you're going to have this screen and it defaults to people in my organization uh, which means they have a ton of power and this is quite dangerous so anybody could get into this meeting at any time if they're in the organization and since they're obviously logged into the school uh, they could get in there and anybody in the school with the link could get in there so there'd be a lot of possible zoom bombing and because it's it's default to people in my organization can present they can also kick the teacher out they can do all kinds of stuff because they're basically presenters which gives them a huge amount of, of power so you need to change that immediately when this screen comes up and again to get to that you clicked on the meeting options it'll open a new tab this tab um, so you'll have still this will be open in one tab another tab right next to it or at the end will be this tab and then you change these two things just to use the pull down menus and change them to only me and only me. All right, so now you've created meetings that cannot be entered until you open them. And they, uh, anybody who does enter them can't seize control as presenter. So the meetings are safely hermetically sealed until you feel like opening them. All right, and then since you still have this tab open, and here you can see the two tabs I was talking about. Here's the one you made it in. And then I clicked on meeting options that popped open this tab. I did this thing there. Then you go back to the original tab, copy this, the join Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, and then, and this is why this takes a while to set up and you don't want to do this too often, go back to your original group. Like for instance, that was going to be the meeting for group A. I paste it. Oh, actually before you can paste that in there, you click on a little gear wheel and there's one that says edit page. And then you click, uh, you just paste in that join Teams meeting uh, link there. And then there's like a, save button at the bottom and then this group is now ready to use this meeting the thing is though they can't actually get into it because it is closed um, because you have set it so that only you can bypass the lobby so they can click on this but they're just going to end up in the lobby all right so that's how you set it up you'll have to do this obviously each time for each group so that's a little tedious second thing uh or at this point a little break um you have assigned uh students and they have easily accessible links they can pop back and forth between your main meeting and this one. Um, and so they'll actually have two meetings open at a time, their group meeting and then the main meeting. And they can just pause one or the other as they go between the two meetings. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, they could uh, copy the links and send them to each other and cause all kinds of problems. But again, you'd, you'd have a limited set of suspicious characters who could have shared that link. And so that might make it a little easier. Um, and honestly, it's hard to imagine that you know anybody is going to really do that in real time uh, without getting caught and um, and if you teach the students pretty well that they can just leave a room with a bad actor in it you know because they just leave and then rejoin the main room they can immediately get out of the problem and come back to the main room where you have full control and um, and therefore you're good to go I mean in the end teams meeting somebody can say a bad thing but at least this way um, they can get out of the meeting no student can take control of the meeting which is quite crucial because of the permissions you set um, and they can always just leave the one thing I would definitely stress is make sure to add your instructional assistants to every one of the rooms you create. Um, if your instructional assistants have become a student in your class, which is the only way you can actually keep them there. If you make them a co-teacher, they'll get kicked out every 24 hours. But definitely make sure to add all your instructional assistants to each of those pages you made so that they can go in and find the students that they're trying to help. All right. Um, and so then when the class starts, uh, you just tell the students at the appropriate moment to go find the group that they're in, click on their group. Um, actually, they won't have to find their group because they'll only be the one that they're in. And then they'll 
go into that. This is what they would see. They'll click on the Teams meeting and they will immediately bounce into that meeting. This will take them out of the main meeting. It'll say they're paused and it'll open another meeting. And from the teacher's point of view, you'll also have to join each of those meetings. So this is a little chaotic. Um, it's a little more chaotic than breakout rooms. On the other hand, this actually does work. And right now, breakout rooms don't. So you'll end up with, a, I always just make a cascading set of meetings. Uh, you can see this one I'm paused on, and I'm actually in this meeting. And I just click between the various meetings to talk to the students um, and see what's going on. I can go into these meetings because I'm the owner of them, and I can close them one at a time if I want to drag them all back into the main room. It won't actually drag them all back the way a breakout room does. It'll just end the meeting for them and they would actually have to click on the window where the other call is going. But my students in advisory with no training at all had no problem moving between the various meetings uh, and knowing that when I closed a meeting that they would go in here. This also means some of the weird problems about like you showing up muted and all kinds of other stuff just can't happen. Um, and the thing you can do if, uh, if you want when you create these meetings, and I will do this myself, although this is kind of a personal choice method, um, like a couple minutes before class starts, I'm gonna open all my meetings. Um, the students can't join because they would end up in lobby. If you want, you can leave it that way and you can bounce from room to room letting people in. That would take a long time because it probably takes like 30 seconds to join a room and then you'd have to hope everybody who wanted to be in the room was in the room and then you would have to admit them all. So what I'm probably going to do actually is I'm going to go into each room and if you click on the little people button, uh, you can then click on uh, these three buttons in the people button and that will bring up the manage permissions and download attendance buttons. And you want to click on manage permissions. And manage permissions is going to open up in a tab the exact thing that you already looked at before. Um, and actually it would, hopefully, if you've done it right, it'll be set like this. And then you can change it a little bit. Um, so you're clicking on manage permissions. It's opening up that tab. And then you're going to change for me anyway, I'm going to change those permissions to people in my organization. And so that way, the students who are supposed to be able to get in that room and who have that link, which they can only find through the page that they've had shared with them, although obviously they could share that link, hopefully they won't, um, then they don't have to wait for you to show up. That, that room will just be open to them and they can go straight in, unless they're a guest, in which case you actually will still have to let them in, but they're not supposed to log in as guests. In the end, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of meeting permissions opened um, in your browser, which is irritating, but then you do have control. So that was my meeting A, B, and C, and I set all my permissions the way they wanted, uh, which was that. And then I had all my windows open so the students could, you know, be in the main meeting for a while. And I would say, okay, go to your other meeting, and they would click on the links um, and get into their other meeting. And then at the end, once this was over, or once I'm coming back to like synchronous time, I would then go back to each of these things um, after I've ended those meetings and reset them to only me, only me. And so that way, basically, only when I want the meetings open for the students to be able to get into, are they open. And I never set it so that they can present without me there because that gives them control of the meeting. I'll probably change that a little bit later when I need them to be able to, uh, to share screens. But uh, when I close the meeting out for the day, I'm going to make it like this, because otherwise that meeting link will be available to them um, while you're not around. So you definitely want to close the meetings after you have ended the meeting so nobody can reopen them. And then tomorrow, like I know this is all like takes a really long time and it's taken me 14 minutes to explain it. But then the next day, you'll have the groups already. So for the next month, the kids could very easily, you know, pop in and out of their little small groups. Um, and so this would definitely be something you could do to have breakout rooms that are permanent um, more than you would otherwise have them in the presently dysfunctional breakout room situation that we have. I know that's complicated, but um, setting it up took me, like I said, seven or so minutes. And then once it was there, the students moved back and forth really quickly. And clicking through these various things to close them at the end look, took 45 seconds. So um, once you've gone through this effort, it does build out really quickly. It's stable. The kids can move back and forth as you want. And so hopefully breakout rooms will work in teams eventually pretty quickly. But this does work for now. Thank you and goodbye.